So when two molecules collide, an atom or atoms can transfer from one molecule to the other and produce a new molecule. That process is known as a chemical reaction. And it's a really important process. It occurs everywhere in biology. It's crucial in industry. There are few things more important than chemical reactions. And it's very important as chemists to understand the mechanism of chemical reactions. When molecules collide, which atoms are going to transfer, what are the products, what are the reactants, and how fast is that chemical reaction going to go. And understanding the speeds of chemical reaction is the area of chemistry known as chemical kinetics. And the crucial quantity that one really needs to know when you have chemical reactions is, is the rate of reaction or the rate constant of the chemical reaction. And one wants to, lots of very many scientists and chemists spend their time measuring the rates of chemical reactions and looking at the products of the chemical reactions. The trouble is sometimes, and quite often, doing experiments is quite a complicated and expensive process. And nowadays in the modern world, there's another way of finding the rates of chemical reactions without having to do an experiment at all. And that is to use theory and computers instead. And the crucial thing is that when one molecule collides with another, there's a potential energy between them. And that potential energy usually goes up to a maximum and comes down the other side. So if the molecules have enough speed, have enough kinetic energy, and that's above the barrier of the reaction, the, barrier, the reaction will just go very quickly. But most reactions have this barrier. And quite often, the molecules don't have enough kinetic energy to go over the barrier. So how does the reaction then occur? Well, you can still get a reaction, chemical reaction, when there's a barrier and energy, kinetic energy less than the barrier, because the atoms can tunnel through the barrier. They can go from one side to the other. And that is a remarkable effect. It's an effect that arises out of quantum theory. It's not, it doesn't come from Newton's classical theory. It comes from quantum theory. Remark and just extraordinary that in principle, I'm in this room and there's a window there, and in principle, in quantum theory, I could just pass through and go the, through the other side, tunneling through the barrier. In practice, though, that doesn't happen because the probability of tunneling is so, so, so small. But when you've just got one molecule colliding with another, and you might have a hydrogen atom transferring from one molecule to another, there is quite a large probability of tunneling through that barrier in quantum mechanics. So a very important part of modern quantum chemistry and theoretical chemistry is to calculate the tunneling probabilities. What's the probability of passing through this barrier from one side to the other? And the theory that one uses is quantum mechanics. And the quantum theory of quantum mechanics was really most uh, rigorously developed in the 1920s. And in particular, the theory uh, came out of a famous equation due to the great Austrian scientist, Erwin Schrödinger. And uh, he wrote down the key equation of quantum mechanics that's practically used for doing calculations on atoms and molecules. And that was the Schrodinger's equation. It was an equation that just came out of the blue when Schrodinger was on a skiing holiday in Switzerland in, in, uh, at Christmas time in 1925, and he published it in 1926. And his, the first equation was just on the energy levels of the electronic states of the hydrogen atom. And then he applied it to the harmonic oscillator and to rotational motion of molecules. And then subsequently, his great competitor, Max Born, another 
great scientist who was in Göttingen, thought he'd apply Schrodinger's equation to collisions between atoms and molecules. Something new to collisions between atoms and molecules. And, and then born uh, in that process, realized that Schrodinger's equations could be applied to collisions, and then others realized you could then apply it also to chemical reactions, to tunneling through these barriers. So there's an equation for atoms passing through these, these, these potential barriers, and you can solve that equation, Schrodinger's equation, and get the probability for going from one side of a chemical reaction to the other. Now, this is very temperature dependent process. If the temperature is very low, the energies of the molecules are very low, there's a great big barrier and the tunneling probability is very small. And if the temperature rises, the atoms move, molecules move around more and then they can tunnel through the barrier just near the top of the barrier and the tunneling probabilities are very high. So the rates of reaction are very temperature dependent. The tunneling in chemical reactions through these barriers is very temperature dependent. And so one has to do these calculations solving Schrodinger's equation many times. You solve it for, for a um, low collision energies, higher collision energies and higher collision energies and then you average over all those energies to get your rates of the chemical reaction. Now a lot of chemists, a lot of scientists know that you can apply Schrodinger's equation to calculate properties of atoms and molecules like infrared spectra, electronic spectra, thermodynamic properties like energy changes, but not many people know that you can solve Schrodinger's equation to calculate the rates of chemical reactions. And this has all sorts of important applications. For example, if you look in the Earth's atmosphere, in the Earth's atmosphere there are many important reactions going on um, at, at almost at sort of the room temperature that we have here involving molecules like water, OH, radical, oxygen, ozone, nitrogen oxides, various compounds of carbon, carbon dioxide of course, the most crucial one for global warming. There are all these reactions going on in the Earth's atmosphere and one has to calculate the rates of those reactions and sometimes they're hard to measure. So you can solve Schrodinger's equation to calculate the rates of all the different reactions that are occurring in the Earth's atmosphere and, and, and explain many of the mechanisms of what's going on there. And not just in the Earth's atmosphere. Another very important area is in astronomy, where you get molecules in outer space. And uh, it's, it's, it's a fascinating area where many molecules, uh, spe the spectra of many molecules have been detected especially by radio astronomy uh, from interstellar space, the space between stars, where there are mo many molecules. And those molecules can go on to have chemical reactions. And it's very important to understand how molecules are formed in those conditions. And they can have quite low temperatures, for example, in, in very low temperatures in interstellar clouds. So one of the important applications that one that, that of using quantum mechanics nowadays is to predict the rates of chemical reactions that can go on in, ast in astrophysical environments at low temperatures and sometimes in high temperatures. And this is a very important area for the applications of quantum mechanics. For example, a lot of people are interested in how do the organic molecules form where you get lots of carbon atoms. And if you can explain that, you might be able to explain how the molecules of life form, where you've got carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, one or two other atoms, and how those sorts of molecules form. And even how, how uh, longer car carbon chain molecules form wasn't really w well known until in my group and other groups, people started to do calculations on chemical reactions using quantum mechanics. And we in fact found that if you get a carbon atom and react it with molecules like acetylene 
and ethylene, the reactions go very quickly, even at the very low temperatures of interstellar clouds. And you can calculate the rates of those chemical reactions, and you can predict the sorts of molecules that are being formed. And then sometimes people can measure the spectra of those molecules and then relate that back down to the calculations that people have done. And another big problem in astrophysics, in fact one of the big fundamental problems in astrophysics, involves by far the most abundant molecule that there is, hydrogen, H2. Now it's known from the fundamental uh, theories of astronomy that you get a lot of hydrogen atoms produced. Um, and the question is, how do the hydrogen atoms combine to form hydrogen molecules? Because if you get a hydrogen atom here and a hydrogen atom here and they collide, they'll vibrate for a little and always then fall apart. So one thing that we did is, is look at this problem. And, and, and one thing you get in astronomy is you get a lot of what are known as interstellar grains, that is small solid particles. They can be made of silicon, they can be made of oxygen, and they can actually act as catalysts for chemical reactions. Now what catalysts do is that they bring down this barrier to a chemical reaction that I was talking about earlier. And uh, they have a crucial role, of course, in industry um, because they can allow chemical reactions to occur that wouldn't otherwise occur. And one thing we found is that if you put hydrogen atoms on surfaces, on solids like silicon oxides, the, 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 the grain, the silicon oxide, can act as a catalyst and the hydrogen atoms can come together and the catalyst can take the energy away from the hydrogen so it can produce H2. And then the hydrogen can, can uh, come off and that is how H2 is formed. And the catalysts are very important in industry. One of the most important processes there is, is producing ammonia from nitrogen and from hydrogen, N2 and H2. And there's a huge barrier for this process. But there are metal catalysts originally developed by Haber, the great uh, German chemist, uh, using iron. If you, if you do that reaction with catalysts such as iron, you bring down the barrier and the reaction can go. And under, so if you've got N2 plus H2, you can bring down the barrier, you can break nitrogen and it can react with H2 to form NH and then NH can react with H2 to form NH2 and then another hydrogen to produce ammonia, which has very important applications in agriculture and so on. But all that comes back down to chemical reactions and using a catalyst to bring down the, the barrier uh, in the chemical reaction. And all that can be calculated nowadays using Schrodinger's quantum mechanics. And you can predict all those rates. And you can also predict very cleverly nowadays different types of catalysts. You can mix iron with ruthenium in different variations and get very efficient catalysts that you can calculate using the methods of quantum mechanics. So it's quite extraordinary really how this fundamental theory, first of all developed for the hydrogen atom by Schrodinger in 1926, can now be applied to, in a very useful way to many important industrial, environmental and other processes that people are interested in.